Okay, time to wind a coil. This is a pivotal moment in my coil winding career because this is coil number one. Cable, wires installed, locking collar on the end. I'm going to pull the wire and the cable with one hand and turn the spool with the other. The first couple of coils are the most critical in that they need to nest against the plexiglass disc as tight as possible. So I've got a little hammer and a small block of wood and I just want to make sure come on. I tap that into place. Okay. going to hold the cable underneath the copper and that way it looks like I'm going to get a nice nesting effect of the coils. Now when I hit coil 16 I should be at exactly 3 inches. When I hit coil 32, I should be six, halfway in the core. If everything works out, I'm just gonna keep on winding to the end. I just have the spool sitting on a broomstick handle a little workbench in behind me just so it'll easily unwind as I do this. Almost time to take a measurement. And let's see where I am. Just a couple of more coils. Okay, I'm at the end of that coil wind. That actually only took about 15 minutes. Kind of happy with that. Remember the cotton batten that doesn't wick or absorb water? I found a purpose for it. It's a good thing because I bought about a yard and a half of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip a gear clamp over the end. Reason for the cotton batting is, is so I don't tear through the insulating material on my copper wire. Now, I do suspect when I cut this, I'm going to get a bit of a, an unwind here at the end. But that's okay. As long as I can hold it here, I can play with the last couple of coils and get them into the holes at the end. Okay, so I'll get this done and then it's time to cut the cable and the wire and feed it through. Okay, 64 coils. That actually worked out not too bad. When I got to the end here, I cut the copper and the cable, left myself a little bit slid my locking collars over both the wire and the cable and that allowed me to pull and snug these last couple of coils in with the uh, with the gear clamps on there to ensure that I go, got a good nesting all the way to the end. I'm happy. Next, I throw a layer of cotton on this puppy and then I'm going to do the shrink wrapping. Okay, time to wrap some cotton. Just to let you know what I did. Cut it on a bit of an angle here. One small drop of cyanacrylate glue seems to hold this stuff really well. I tried a, uh, I tried using a, well, I tried my sewing skills, but they're pretty much non-existent. So 
I switch to the glue. Now, what I have to do is I just have to ensure, and I pull it snug, but I have to look underneath to make sure that when I get my double wrap on that, I do a proper overlap. is right there. There's my edge. Just have to make sure that my seams line up perfectly. So I want the same thickness all the way down the core. And when I hit the end, another small drop of glue, and I should be good to go and ready for the shrink wrap. ready to shrink wrap. I'll place that in there. Now all I'm going to do is I'll just line it up with the edge of the core and to start with I'm just going to lightly tack it into place. Now I'm, I don't plan on taking advantage of the shrinking qualities of the shrink wrap. I just want to take advantage of its heat activated adhesive and the fact that it's watertight, which is what I'm looking to get a nice seal on each individual cell. Just working this stuff around a little bit. I may have to do a, a tad of a trim, but it's tacked across the top. Did I do the whole thing? Quick one. Okay, and let's just pull it, give it an overlap, even it out as best I can, and Back into place. And once this is done, like I said, what I'll be doing is, is I'm now going to run a very thin bead of silicone around the outer edge of the shrink wrap to ensure 100% watertight seal from the next core. And I'll now wrap this in a layer of cotton and start on winding number two once I get this tacked down properly. Coil number two. Imperative that when I wind this coil that the copper and the cable stay perfectly stacked against the end of this spool again. That's the idea behind this because if I can do another 64 windings exactly as I've laid the first set of windings on, theoretically I should have all my copper and cable lined up perfectly, which should give me a spiral disc of the copper and the cable all the way through the, the core. Now I'm starting to get quite a buildup of cotton on here, so I have to be cautious on the tension that I'm placing on my wire and try to keep it even as possible throughout the entire length of the coil. I don't want to pull it too tight. If not, I'm going to have a bit of a depression in the windings. Once I get a layer on here, maybe 20 coils or so, 
I'll lay a straight edge across the top of the coils, compare it to my lines at the edge of the disc to ensure that I'm where I'm supposed to be for the correct diameter of this second winding. One thing I don't think I mentioned was the 3 16 locking collars that I used for the cable, I drilled those out to 1364. So it needed just a little bit more room to get over that cable wire because its diameter is not 100% consistent. So now they slip over nice and easy and lock into place. So once I get this done, I'll be doing exactly the same thing as what you saw on coil number one. Another layer of cotton over this, layer of shrink wrap, and then I'm just going to continue building 10 coils. So I'll see you at the end when I have all my 10 coils built.